be here to learn more and, and of course to be educated when you do go into the voter box to make sure that you're voting for the person that best represents your values and beliefs. So I very much appreciate this opportunity. Um, again, my name is Martha Roby and I'm running for the second congressional district and I want to share with you just briefly so that we have lots of time lots of time for questions, but I want to tell you real quickly who I am, what I believe, and why I'm running for Congress. I was born and raised in Montgomery, and after law school, uh, my husband and I decided to make Montgomery again my home. He's from North Alabama, and uh, we have two small children, uh, Margaret and George. And um, in 2003, my predecessor on the city council uh, had served around 24 years and had decided that it was time for her to enjoy her retirement. And so there was an opening on the Montgomery City Council. And being from Montgomery and seeing that opportunity to, um, to get involved with my city to make Montgomery a clean, safe place to live, I decided, along with my husband, that that, that was the right thing to do. And so in 2003, in a six-person race, I was elected with just a little over 52% of the vote. And I've worked real hard on the Montgomery City Council to look at ways that we can reduce spending in Montgomery. And I have fought very hard against tax increases all throughout my tenure on the council. Most recently, um, right before our current congressman um, went to office, uh, the last budget that he submitted to the council drained the city's reserve fund, leaving a zero balance. And he also put a $2 million tax increase uh, in front of the council. And I fought really, really hard, not just against that, against that budget, but also against the tax increases. And then once that budget passed, um, there, we were left with, again, that zero balance. And my colleagues, some of my colleagues on the council thought that it would be a good idea to try to raise revenue to replenish that reserve fund. And there were actually five tax increases in that short amount of time. And I fought hard against every single one of them. And sometimes I was the lone vote. Uh, raising my hand up and standing up against. But not only did I fight against those tax increases, I offered solutions to reduce our spending. And as we see, there are so many parallels with what I've experienced on the council and what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now. Um, neighborhood by neighborhood, we found common ground. Not, not always was my conservative approach uh, accepted, but we have cleaned up our streets and we have made Montgomery a better place. In 2007, I ran for re-election and received a huge vote of confidence when I won with a little over 82% of the vote. When we send someone to Congress, it's absolutely important that we send someone who shares our fundamental values and beliefs. So I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe in the sanctity of life, the protection of the Second Amendment. I believe in small, limited government and lower taxes. I believe that we should live within our means, and I believe in the central role of faith and family in our lives. You know, when I was first old enough to start understanding government and the United States of America, Ronald Reagan was our president. And I, of course, saw this country through his eyes as the shining city on the hill. But lately we have watched as those values and that light has dimmed because we are being represented by people in Washington who don't share those same fundamental values and beliefs. I'm running for Congress because I'm absolutely appalled at the current leadership in Washington. We are facing one of the worst economic crises this country has seen since the Great Depression, and we are not being represented by people who share our values and beliefs. Congress spends and spends money that we do not have, and they are leaving an unbelievable debt for our children and our grandchildren. Unemployment continues to rise. They take it over the car companies and the banks. And now they're threatening to take over health care. And it's with health care that we absolutely must draw the line. I believe in a free market system that drives down costs, increases transparency, accessibility, and keeps our quality of care the best in the world. This is not what's being proposed by Congress. If it were truly about reform and not government takeover, then we would see these common sense applications being made. That is not what is happening. Individuals should be given the same tax breaks as employer-based systems. Um, our, our 
medical insurance ought to be portable. It ought, we ought to be able to take it across state lines, much like we do our life insurance policies. These are commonsensical approaches that would drive down costs and allow the private market, the free market, to take um, to, to be involved rather than the government. Congress most recently passed a law that's going to require us to pay the federal government every time we turn our lights on. Now listen, I want to see our economy back on track. And I want to see improvements in our private health care system. And I want to see us look at alternative energy sources, but there is a better way to do it. Not this spend and spend and spend and grow government. Uh, again, leaving an unbelievable debt for our children and our grandchildren. You know, of course, here in the second district, we certainly have assets that can play a huge role in getting our economy back on track. We have unbelievable, uh, an unbelievable agricultural community, and our farmers are some of the best in the world. We also have two of the finest military installations, and we need to make sure that we continue to elect people to office who will embrace both of those things because they are the heart and soul of what exists here in the second district. And let me just say this, with this current administration, although BRAC is not in front of us right now, we all need to be concerned about spending and spending on our military. You know, there's only so many dollars coming in the door. And if we continue to allow Congress to pass this legislation that is costing us unbelievable amounts of money, where do you think they're going to go first? We have got to protect against our um, military bases, and I ensure you that in Congress that will be um, a number one priority. And certainly here in the second district, we have so many military families, some of which may be right here in this room. And to each of you, we owe um, an unbelievable debt of gratitude. And we here in this district and in this state and in this country need to do everything we can to support those who have family members that are fighting uh, our nation's wars. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day in Enterprise, and they were talking to me about the dwell time and the number of missions that some of these young people have been on that um, comparatively to one's whole career um, that they have been deployed more times than some have in their entire career. And it is certainly taking a toll. And again, we as a community, as a state, um, as a congressional district, need to make sure that we are giving our military families all of the hope and the in, in addressing all of their needs that we can um, as a community. You know, <clears throat> I want to represent you in Congress because I believe that I best represent this district's fundamental values and belief. And when I go to Congress, I will assure you that my very first vote will be to take the gavel away from Mrs. Pelosi and to elect conservative leadership that will set an agenda to get this country back on track. We have got to elect real conservatives that understand what this country was founded on. And for that, I would like to ask you for your support. I will, I will not raise your taxes. I will hire staffers in my office both here in the district and in Washington who understand Alabama, who understand our community. I will not just vote for you every time, I will fight for you. And let's all be reminded how Congress works. I'll, f I'll vote for you in the first five minutes of the vote and not the last. <laughs> but I just want to take a minute, I mean everybody in this room certainly understands how it works, um, but when the Democrat and the liberal interest groups when it comes time to make those votes, that's when the, when the piper has to be paid. And I don't think we as a congressional district or as a state want to have to hold our breaths every time there is a vote of importance that's going to affect our well-being to know whether or not our congressman is best representing us. So, um, again, I'm happy to answer your questions. It would be a tremendous honor for me to get to represent you, not just here in Alabama, but in Washington. So again, I would be remiss if I didn't look you all in the eye and say I would love to have your support and your vote in this election. And again, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have.